worship you until the very end, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord God, thank you for your presence. Lord God, you are here with us. Lord God, your sons and your daughters are watching this and they are worshiping you together, Lord God. Lord God, touch Every one of them right now, Lord God. Touch every one of them right now, Lord. Have your way, my Father. Touch them right now, Lord God. Ministering to them, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Let them taste and see that you are good, good God. Hallelujah. Let them experience, Lord. Let them experience your love. Hallelujah. For your word said, you will not leave us nor forsaking us we are not alone they are not alone you are with them hallelujah lord god thank you father for this wonderful afternoon lord god lord god as we study the word as we study your word lord god ministering this word to every one of us have us learn something from you, Lord God. Lord God, we want to be grateful. We want to be thankful to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, worship team. You may take a rest. And uh, yes, how many people are excited? Even though we are worshiping God online. You know, our God is so wonderful. Our God is so good. Even though the world pandemic tell us cannot do this, cannot do that. But I believe you are sons and daughters that love Jesus. Always find a way to worship God. Right? I believe that. I believe that. Today is our last um, series that was talking about love. And uh, I privilege to... Uh, preach this session. You have experienced a great sermon by Pastor Jason. He did wonderful. And this time is my chance. So the sermon, the sermon topic is love never fails. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8. Love suffers long. And is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. It's not provoked things no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. But rejoice in the truth. Bears all things, believe all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Love never fails. In other translation, ESV said, love never ends. The love of Christ, the love of God toward people never ends. New King James said, love never fails. New Living Translation said, love will last forever. Amplify said, love never fails. It's never fate nor ends. This translation are great. The Word of God are powerful because the Word of God carry the power of God. Let me explain to you a little bit, share with you a little bit. Maybe some of you already known about love in Greek. But if some of you that never know about this yet, let me share with you about love in Greek. Love in Greek have many forms of love. One, love is agape love. 
It means the love of God toward his people. He loves his good people, love his good God. Agape is the love of God toward the people. Another form of love, according to Greek, is eros. Eros love means it's a sexual love. And another form of love in Greek called phileo. It's affection or friendship's love. Friendship's love. And another one, form of love called storch. It's affection and especially affection, the love of the parents toward their children. Another one, form of love, philootia. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not good at pronouncing Greek. <laughs> I mean, self-love, you have love toward yourself. And another one, it's a xenia. Xenia, xenia means it's a compassion love. It's, for example, like the guest in the old days travel from afar. He get he in, up in your village, he have no food to eat. You have compassion on that person, and you give him some food and place to stay and stuff like that. So I have so many forms of love. In NIV, have listed 551 times about love. The love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is talking about agape's love. Paul wrote this thing to the Corinthian, and he talked about agape love. It's the love of God. So if you are to Read again from that scripture. So true agape's committed love does not take second place. Too selfish. Selfishness. And another one, the agape's love commit does not take second place to pride. Another true agape love commit love does not take second place to anything else. True agape's love, committed love, is always pure. Love never fails. True agape's love, commit love, never give up. True agape's love, commit love, never end. Love never decreases. This is the love of God. Never decreases. Never move from high place to the low place. Not all this time he loves you so much, and later on his love toward you is getting less and less. It's not like that. It doesn't decrease. Love is never spoiled. Wow. The love of God toward us never spoiled. It never infected, spoiled, lot, uh, rotten, or wasted. This is the love of God toward us. So love, agape love, is love of God. God loves, for God so loves the world. God loves his people. And he, he wants us to experience his love. He wants us to share the love of God to others as well. So love always connected with the heart. It's connected with, from the heart of God to our heart, to your heart. This is the love of God. So, love never fails. So never, it means, it's not ever, never, it means no end. Fails. Fail, the word fail, it's happened with a broken world. Broken world, it fails. It fails in this area, fails in that area. The world really hate fail, hate failures. The whole world did not like failure. Failure is not fun, but God can always turn failure into something great. This one time, a gentleman by the name of Peter, 
He was walking with Jesus. He see all the signs, all the wonders that Jesus had done. And then later on, Israelite people have crucified the Savior of the world. Crucify him. After a crucifixion, Peter feel hopeless. Before that, if you are to think about it, he denied when people over there, when they um, uh, arrested Jesus, and they, they, they turned to Peter and said, this man must be one of his disciples. Peter said, nope, nope. He re has rejected Jesus three times. And after rejected Jesus three times, and later on, after crucifixion, Peter and his team go back from following Jesus because there's no Jesus. Jesus been crucified. No more Jesus to follow. He forgotten all the things that Jesus had taught them to do. But later on, Jesus appeared to them when they were eating breakfast by the seashore. In John chapter 21, verse 15 to 17, so Jesus appeared to them, and Jesus asked them for food for breakfast. But verse 15, so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? more than all of these people. Because some of these people, they love God because of God provide some food to them. They love God because God healed their children, healed their family. They love God because they see signs and wonders. And Jesus talked to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these, more than these people? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. You know, Lord, you know that I love you. The word love that Peter referred to Jesus at this point is not the love, is not the agape love. It's the filial love. It's God, I love you as friendship. Hmm. He said to him, then Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. So if you love me, you feed my lamb. People are important to Jesus. Jesus want people to take care of people. Jesus want people to experience the love of God. So he said, so you, now you love me, you feed my lamb. You feed my lamb. How do you feed the lamb? According to Jesus, the word of Jesus, I think teach them, show them, have them, have these people, the lamb, the little sheep. They don't have experienced good thing. Feed them, love on them, and care for them. Feed my lamb. Jesus referred to people as his lamb, his people. He said to him again, Jesus said to Peter again, a second time. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said again, one more time, you love me, Peter? Peter said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, you know, this love again, it referred to filio's love. You know that I love you as a friendship love. The friendship love is not that great. Just a friendship. If you do good for me, I will do good for you. If you treat me nice, I treat you nice as well. This is a friendship love. And so, yes, I love you. And he said to him, Jesus said to Peter, tend my sheep. Tend my sheep. Look after my sheep. Care for my sheep. He said to him the third time, Jesus said to Peter the third time. 
Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Do you agape me? So, do you love me? Agape me? Like I love you? I, like I agape you? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, why God talk to me the third time? Do you love me? And he said to him, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Peter said, Lord, Jesus, you know my heart. You know that I did not have the love that you love like you love toward me. This is what Peter said to Jesus. But Jesus said, um, and uh, uh, love, love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep this time. One is a lamb. One and the other one is a uh, yep, sheep and then sheep again. Jesus care about us. Care about the people. You see, Peter had failed many times. But the love of God toward Peter is never fail. Another time in the scripture, Israelites, they are people that experience the love of Christ. They experience the miracle of Christ. They heard, they seen it with their own eyes, with their own ear. But later on, in Luke chapter 23, verse 34, I mean, before that, they crucified Jesus. But Jesus is about to die, hanging on that cross. In Luke chapter 23, verse 34, Jesus said, he prayed to the Father, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Father, I really love these people. Even though these people harmed me, even though these people hurt me, even though these people killed me, but I love them. Father, don't do any harm toward these people. Don't do any harm toward these people because I love them dearly. This is the love of Christ toward us, toward the people, even though we fail. Our love toward him fails, but Jesus never failed. His love toward us never failed. Father, don't do any bad thing toward these people. Forgive them, Father. Forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing, Father. And, they, and later on, they divided his garments, his clothes. He cast lots. He just divided can you imagine? Crucify and take the clothes and make him naked. Shame him in front of the crowd. But Jesus' love toward these people never fail. Love begins with God. For God is love. In John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and, know, and knows God. Love is of God. And anyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The agape is love. is born of God. The agape's love is connected to the hearts of God. When your heart connected with the heart of God, your heart will experience the real love. The whole world looking for love, looking for love anywhere, everywhere. But if their heart is it, not, not connected with the heart of God, they will not experience the real love. The real love. Because the real love comes from God. Anyone who loves is born of God and knows God. 
Verse 8, he who does not love does not know God. For God is love. Ladies and gentlemen, for God is love. We might experience love from people, from families, from friends, experience compassion, loves, and all that. But the one love that we can't miss is the agape love. It's the love of God. Because this love never fails. Never fails. During the time that Jesus walked the earth, Jesus never stays still. Jesus walked from village to village, city to city, because he had loved us before we love him. He has loved us. He cares for us. He cares because he don't want us to be lost. He don't want the world. He don't want people in the world to go to hell. But Jesus wants to restore the people, the relationship that he wants to have with people because he wants to forgive. He forgive all of these people. But these people, did, some of them did accept his gifts. Others did not. So he walked the earth and loved on people and proclaims good news, proclaims the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is near. You need to experience the kingdom of God. You need to experience the real love of God. You need to experience the touch from the heart of God. This is God. And after that, Jesus, after Jesus go to heaven, Jesus has his disciple. This time, one of his disciples, whom Jesus has restored, Peter saw Jesus, experienced the miracle with Jesus, and later on, Peter walked away from Jesus, and Jesus came to Peter again. And Peter have experienced the love of Christ again. The heart of Peter have connected with the heart of God again. Peter start to have the heart of God. Therefore, Peter have the heart of God. And so therefore, Peter want to share the heart of God with the people around him as well. In Acts chapter 2, the Peter that failed, the Peter that... Um, Wimps, it turned out to be Peter that is brave. Peter, talk in front of people. Acts chapter 2, verse 36 to 41. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for the certain that God hath made him both Lord and Christ. This Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they were healed, Heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brother, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness, for the forgiveness of your sin. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39. For the promise is for you. There is a promise for you. If you're not connected with the love of Christ, if you're connected with the love of God, the promise can't be granted. You can't take that promise. A promise is you. It's yours. You will receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children, and for all who are far off. This gift is for you, for your children, and for the people even to deliver for. Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself, and with many other words, he bore witness and continues to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. Verse 41. So those who received his word were baptized and they were added 
that day about 3,000 souls. A, a person that fails to love God like before. He's turned away. God has restored them and to change the world. My brothers and sisters, I believe that nobody wants to fail, want to, to fail in anything, especially fail in love, especially fail in the love of Christ. But sometimes our heart not so stable. Sometimes our heart is shaking. If you see that the Lord provides, if you pray for something and you see the Lord answer prayer right away, or you said, oh, God is good, God is amazing, God always provides, and later on, if you did not see that, you start to feel a little shaky in the faith. Is this God real? Is this God? Did, 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 does God really love me? We start to feel doubt. But my brothers and sisters, the love of Christ for us never fails, never changed, never in, never ever. And now I want us to experience the real love of Christ. I don't know where you are in the relationship with God. Whether you have good relationship, not so good or bad, it's okay. You can always turn to God. God can restore you. This afternoon, I want you to experience the agape love of Christ. But music is playing. Allow the agape love of Christ get into your heart. Let experience His love a little bit. He can restore you. There's no sin that's too great that Jesus cannot forgive. He can forgive your sin. Just go back to Him. My brothers and sisters, His love never fails. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. He can help you. I want to finish with the scripture in 1 Corinthians as well. Chapter 13, verse 13. Now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The greatest of thee is love. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, I know that you all want to love people. I know that you all want to experience, other to experience that you love them, you care for them. But sometimes, our heart kind of feel like, um, yeah, maybe, maybe next time. You know, I don't have to love them so much. They have a lot of friends and stuff like that. It's okay. That's all right. We want to give love. We want to share love with others. But it's, sometimes it's hard because we ourselves did not experience the full agape love from God. That's why we little hesitate to share love with others. But I believe that today the Lord can come in and transform your heart with His love. 
Let's connect. Let's connect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's get connected with His love. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Father in heaven, your sons and your daughters are here waiting to experience a stronger love, which is agape love, which is your love. Lord God, baptize every one of them in your love. Let them taste and see themselves, experience themselves that you are a wonderful God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Feed them, protect them, and care for them, and lead them, Lord God. Lord God, I believe that you answer this prayer. Lord God, I lift these people in your mighty hand, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless you, my brothers and sisters. You have a wonderful afternoon. Take care.